Hey guys, Eric here from Expedition Electric and today we're going to talk about these three different types of e-bikes. We've got the front hub conversion, the rear hub conversion, and the mid-drive conversion. We're going to be going over the pros and cons of each of these bikes and uh, if you like this video make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. So the first bike we'll talk about here is the 1000 watt front hub conversion kit. I'm going to turn it on here just to show you it's all working. And um, right now I have this set up to the limiter because it is a front hub bike, I'll get more into that, and I have it limited to 750 watts. Uh, so a much safer speed for a front hub bike. Um, and you know the disadvantage of having the front hub would be that it can, it can kind of skid when you're going uphill, the tire can slip and then catch, and it can be maybe quite wobbly. Um, also, they say that the front forks are a little less strong than the rear dropout, so a lot of people prefer to put the hub motor in the back of the bike. So you got the heavy duty kickstand here uh, to hold the bike, because it does weigh 55 pounds. The kickstand it came with did not work. This is the display for like, this is one for the Walla Mart 1000 watt. And you can see this is a new kit here. But it just shows you basically the battery level, not anything too exciting. If you wanna know your speed and your location, you can use like a GPS app. That's what I do when I ride, so it tells me exactly how fast and how far I've gone. You know, the big advantage to installing the front hub motor is not having to deal with the chain not having to take off all of this and do anything in here, but instead you just remove your front tire, put on another one. Now I did install a torque arm on this one. And what that's supposed to do is help it, help it not drop out of the frame. You, know, you can even add a second one onto this side. But you know, overall this is a pretty fun bike. And like I said, with, this, with the front hub, I do like to keep it lower wattage so it doesn't create as much torque and, and snap the frame. So here we got the 1000 watt rear hub bike. This does go max speed of 28 miles per hour and on a flat surface. And then with this battery, which is located in the back here with the controller, um, it'll take the bike around 20 to 23 miles without pedaling at all. If you want to pedal along with it, um, you're going to go much further. I do not have the pedal assist installed on the, either of these hub bikes because I don't really like how the pedal assist performs. It Sometimes you can be pedaling very slow and it jumps in and just kind of shoots you off. I mean, it shoots you up at a full speed. So instead, I like to use the throttle. I typically don't recommend you know, a throttle of a thousand watts for many people unless they've owned a current uh, previous e-bike of like 350 or 500 watts or 750 or if they have motorbike, uh, dirt bike, mini bike experience. I grew up like riding a lot of those with, with friends and cousins so I felt very comfortable at the speeds of what, the, what this bike would take me. I've ridden this one a lot, about 300 miles and you know, I have to say, it's convenient to have everything located in the back here, including the controller, rather because this bike didn't have a triangle large enough to even fit a battery. I couldn't really slide a battery up and down, and even if I did, I would have had to find a spot to put the, con the controller, which would have been right here. So instead, I just prefer to keep everything in here, which is also you know, a waterproof or water-resistant bag. Um, let me know if you like the pedal assist on these bikes. Uh, I didn't, so I, did, I didn't install on either of these. I've tried it on a different bike and it was just too jumpy. And I really like the throttle. This is you know, a twist throttle, which I feel like once you get the hang of it, it's, it's pretty fun and easy to control. But again, got the cables running all the way down the back here, up here, right into the bag. And um, this was a little more difficult to install than the front hub because I did have to actually end up for this bike, put a new chain on and so I had to deal with that whole chain system, which can be a little tricky if you've never cranked on bikes. 
you know, a level of difficulty of how, how tough is it to make your own e-bike? And the answer is, if you've wrenched on bikes before, where you've pulled on bikes and you've tried to take off tires and do a lot of things like that on bikes, then 10 being the most difficult thing ever, it's like a three or four. Um, if you've never wrenched on bikes, you know, it can be as difficult as a 10 because some things do require force, some things do require uh, knowledge of how to work the part, but hopefully you can check out some of our, our other videos and like how to remove the bike tires, how to fix the chain, how to take off the tires, and I have a few other maintenance videos that show you how to really start working on a bike. Um, but on to the next bike. Check out our website to see a full list of the pros and cons of the different types of e-bike conversions. Hi, this is the 1000 watt uh, Bafang mid-drive BBSHD motor install. And right now I have a 48 volt, 13 amp hour battery by unit pack power. This is the only area that it would fit on the bike. I didn't want to have this one on a rear rack. And then notice how I put it, how a lot of people say upside down. Uh, that is also because in order to take off this battery, I'll just show you. Make sure it's not on. Okay, the battery is off, which is always a good thing to check on. But in order to take off this battery, I had to have room to slide it off because I like to take it off to charge it. So putting it this way, I couldn't, there was no room to slide the battery. So anyway, this is on here pretty tight. And I that, and then I just make sure to lock it on or else it's gonna go falling off because of gravity. Yep. So this bike does have a pedal assist and the pedal assist is pretty nice, pretty smooth. Uh, this one has five levels of pedal assist. I've seen people where they say they've made up to nine levels of pedal assist by programming this bike. Now I'm not sure what programming the computer does to your warranty, so you might want to check that out before doing anything like that. Now this one I also have a few hundred miles on and you know the installation on a scale of one to 10, if you've handled bikes before a lot, installation was like a, maybe we'll say a, a five. It was a little more difficult, unless you have experience removing the bottom bracket of the bike. This bike works with the chain system, so when it goes, it actually propels the chain, and I'll show you that here. All of them are under $500 bikes. This does have the four inch fat tires compared to the two hub drives I showed you, which have two inch tires. So it is more stable. Not only because of the fat tires, but it is more stable because it doesn't have weight up here, it has weight down lower. Um, the the mid drive really has the weight very centered in the middle of the bike, whereas the hub drives either have the weight centered here or here because of the hub. And so this bike does provide the best balance, but Again, it is a better, or it is a little more quality bike with fat tires, so a little more stable when riding. Yeah, I just wanted to show you something about the amount of bike or torque that these bikes have. So you can kind of see here on the, on the rack. You can see that goes pretty quick, you know, you got to, you got to be careful when you're riding an e-bike because you know, it's not really a toy, especially when you start going to speeds over 15 miles an hour. Um, hey guys, I wanted to show you a comparison of the hub drive and mid drive bike in a quick race. Let's check out the two competitors. On this side, we have High Roller, a 26 inch Walmart rear hub conversion kit. The battery and the computer are in this pack. 48 volt, 13 amp hour, unit pack power battery, 1000 watt motor, and this is why I named this bike the High Roller, just because it says it on his tires. So I've got the disc brake also on the rear hub conversion, and that has some pretty good stopping power to it. On the Walmart rear hub kit, we've got safety light, we've got the display screen here, and it's the twist throttle. And here we have 
a new North Rock XC00 bicycle with a 1000 watt Bafang mid drive motor and then the same 48 volt unit pack power 13 amp hour battery. Both these bikes have disc brakes for optimal stopping power. This is great to have disc brakes for your bike. So here we got the brakes and the thumb throttle. And this allows you to change different levels of pedal assist. Also is the on button. And you got your display screen here and shifters grip. Check it out here, we've got the two inch tires on high roller and we've got the four inch tires on north. So pretty big difference there, twice as wide in the tires. And now for the official weigh-in, let's get these bikes up on the scale, which was uh, not very easy to do. And somehow they both ended up weighing in exactly 55 pounds. So in this race, North finished just milliseconds ahead of High Roller. Uh, we'll definitely have a rematch. Let me know what you think about the bikes. Which one do you like better?